Today we are going to discuss the emergence of Neolithic culture in the Indian subcontinent beyond the Harappan cultural zone. I have with me my colleagues from the Ancient Indian History and Culture Department of Calcutta University, Dr. Rita Choudhury, who is now the head of the department, and Prita Bhattacharya from the same department. Neolithic is actually the last phase of Stone Age and this is uh, denoted by an advanced use of finer and better stone tools which are smaller in size, more efficient and manufactured for multiple purpose. But along with this a great uh, signifier of the Neolithic is considered to be man's shift from hunting gathering stage mm -hmm. to food production. Okay. Now this also initiates certain paradigm shift in the relationship between animal, man and land. Does it also mean sedentary living? Yes, of course it means sedentary living because along with farming what is happening is that man's attachment with land mm -hmm. and man's attachment with the herd animals okay. was growing. So they had to select a certain area within which they were carrying out these activities. We have certain clusters of Neolithic in a geographical areas. Uh, one of the chronologically earliest uh, Neolithic clusters were found located in the Bilan Valley which mm -hmm. is in the southern Ganga plains. Uh, the next zone would be the Kashmir region, mm -hmm. Kashmir Neolithic. The third region would be the middle Ganga plains where we have the Bihar mm. uh, sites. Then we have the eastern Indian sites from mm. West Bengal, Orissa and Assam. Mm. And then finally we have the southern Neolithic cultures from uh, mostly from Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and also a little bit from Tamil Nadu. In Belan Valley what we find is that there are clusters of Neolithic sites in the river valley, small river valleys which are the Belan, Son, Lapari, Paisuni and Rihand. And uh, one of the type site is Chopani Mando. Mm -hmm. Now Chopani Mando is very interesting because we have a Mesolithic layer also there and then which is overlaid with the Neolithic layer which gives a clear indication that there was a transformation from the Mesolithic stage to the Neolithic stage. And uh, date wise the Masa character datings, radiocarbon datings we get from Koldiwa okay. which is very interesting because uh, the earliest dating is uh, 8000 BC, 6000 BC time bracket. Mm. And Koldiwa is also very important because this is a particular site where we get not only signatures of habi hab habitations mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. dwelling units, mm -hmm. wattle and daub huts, but also uh, the use of first wild rice and then domesticated rice. Is there any significance of Neolithic finds from Mohagara? Mohagara is a site in the Belan Valley and uh, a most striking discovery is a uh, demarcated area you know and uh, they have identified it as a cattle pen hmm. uh, and uh, they found uh, marks of post holes around that area and about 40 to 60 animals could be enclosed and uh, they identified it by the hoof marks of cattle. Can we have a little bit more about the material culture at the Belan Valley sites? Pottery was mostly handmade and uh, we can identify three types of potteries. One is the cord marked uh, ware, the uh, other one is the black and red ware and there is a plain red ware. The majority of the shapes that have been unearthed include large storage jars and deep bowls. In Kashmir, mm, most of the Neolithic sites that have been discovered are located uh, in a diagonal line from northwest to southeast between the districts of uh, Baramula, then Srinagar, then Anantnag. And uh, the most important sites are Burza Hom, Goof Kral, mm -hmm. Olchi Bagh, Hariparigam, mm -hmm. uh, Wadzal. And these are actually situated on a geological formation which is locally known as Karewa. The geologists inform us that 
most of the valley of Kashmir was actually a lake in the Pleistocene times. Mm. And uh, later on, uh, that lake got dried up. And due to the movement of the Pir Panjal and the Kashmir ranges, mm. the surface of the lake was also elevated, oh. raised, and some sort of table land or terrace had been formed. Mm. Now, the conglomerate which forms this particular kind of table land is composed of uh, alluvial depositions or fluviatile mm. depositions. Mm. Uh, they are composed of sand and clay which is very fertile for cultivation. Mm. And in, in the present times, uh, most of the cultivation that takes place in Kashmir actually occurs on this kind of depositions. Mm. And it is very interesting to note that the prehistoric settlements were also located on this kind of terraces. Kashmir Neolithic sites have yielded some peculiar characteristics in their dwelling patterns. Yeah. At both Burzahum and Gufkral, the two most important excavated sites, we see that the actual people used to live in subterranean pits, holes uh, dug into the ground below the surface. The earliest holes went below as far deep as 4 meters. Later on, they became shallower. The later uh, pits would be about uh, 3 to 5 centimeters only in depth. Mm. Now, the, uh, the shape of these pits would be oval or circular mostly and uh, the walls of the pits would were found to be plastered with mud and not only that, uh, you know, they were actually narrower at the surface of the uh, uh, soil and they got deeper and wider at the bottom. The top circumference would be about uh, 3 meters and at the bottom the circumference would be about 4.5 meters. Okay. Very interestingly, we have found also signs of steps leading down to the mm. floor of the holes. In some cases, the, we do not have any sign of steps. So, it seems that they might, must have used some kind of ladder. At the ground level of the, the floor of the pits actually are marked with post holes. Okay. So, it mm. seems that uh, wooden posts were planted in these holes and the top would be supporting some kind of a thatched roof. The other interesting piece of evidence which has come from this uh, the site of Burzahum for example is the remains of birch tree. Okay. Now, the name Burzahum is very interesting. It is in Kashmir it means the place of burz or birch tree. Birch. So, it seems that probably they used the woods of both birch and some kind of pine roof kind of thatched roof with pine leaves to prepare a shelter. But interestingly enough in the period 2 levels later on we find that these holes were filled up with clay and the top was actually covered and plastered with mud with a coating of red ochre which is also very interesting. Now, in the period 1 level, not only were they living inside these pits, but their hearts were also formed as pits. And the shape of the hearts were different, not round or oval, but square or rectangular. And the hearts were located at the center of the settlement. Okay. It seems a community kitchen sort mm -hmm. of thing. But can you, can you enlighten us as to the burial practices? Well, most of the burials were within the habitational area, right underneath the hut floors. And uh, there were uh, circular pits uh, plastered with lime. Uh -huh. And um, we have uh, both uh, secondary burial and inhumation. And what is very interesting is that we get animal burial oh. along with human burial. Uh, wild animals like wolves or uh, deer, mm -hmm. they were buried and uh, domesticated animals like cattle were also buried along with humans. And uh, what is a very touching picture is uh, the burial of a dog. Uh -huh. You could almost yes. visualize the tame faithful dog following his master to his grave. Would it uh, kind of uh, say something about their practicing hunting and uh, hmm. probably the dogs actually helped, helped. and accompanied the hunters hmm. from this site. What kind of evidence do we have from these sites about their pottery? 
from period one at Burjda home, we have handmade pottery of a very coarse variety and the colors range from uh, gray, buff, red and brown. And another interesting feature is that on the surface of this pottery, we find impressions of a mat. Maybe they were being, when they were being made, they were placed on a mat. So the impressions have come mm -hmm. on the surface. Then in period two, again, the pottery is handmade. But now we have a na new kind of ware, which is a polished burnished ware. Mm -hmm. And the types include in the first period one, rimless bowls, rimless bowls and jars. And in period two, we have high necked jars and uh, bowls with flared lips. And at a later period in Gufkal, we find again handmade pottery with a, a kind of grey ware and again matte impressions on the surface. And there we have the usual forms like basins, bowls, jars and so on. And uh, so that comes at a later period, period. the yes, second subface. Yeah, and yeah. the second subface is actually dated to 1700 yes. BC. Oh. Whereas mm -hmm. the beginnings of this culture at Burza home is actually uh, 2900 BC. Mm. That is a, a, ceramic, a ceramic period yes. where you do not find uh -huh. pottery at all. At, at Gufkra. Oh, but at yeah. Burza home for both the periods the we, we, have we have pottery, pottery. pottery. and handmade pottery. pottery. The stone tools are very interesting. They have a wide array. We have special uh, Neolithic uh, oblong and oval axes and cells and uh, we also have uh, chopping stones, mm -hmm. grinding stones and uh, mace heads. Oh, That's okay. actually an indication for mm -hmm. hunting. Mm -hmm. They have a very nice array of bone tools mm -hmm. also and we have harpoons for example which indicates fishing. fishing. Uh, harpoons and bone points and uh, other scrapers and other such things. So we have a lot of assemblage mm -hmm. for the Neolithic mm -hmm. in Kashmir Valley. Another very interesting evidence is in the form of plant remains. Yes. We get uh, wheat, barley and lentils. Most of the Neolithic sites are found on the north Bihar Plains. Mm. The most important sites are like Chirand, mm. Senuar, uh, Chechar Kutuppur, Maner, Taradi. All of them actually uh, are located near the smaller streams ranging out from Saraju, Ganga and, and the other tributaries of the Ganges in this region. Chirand is located in district Saran. Okay. It is located at the confluence of Saraju and the Ganga river. Mm. And Senuar is in district Rohtak. Uh, Taradi is very interestingly located, it is near Bodh Gaya mm. and Maner is near Patna. Evidence of pottery that we get from Chirand is mostly handmade, it is red, uh, grey or black ware and, and we also have evidence of a burnished grey ware, it is a bit more polished than the handmade ware. And over here one interesting thing that I want to point out that is that we get remnants of houses made of wattle and dove and there are rammed floors and hearths also over there. Okay. And why I would like to mention this is that we find a semicircular hut with oblong ovens over there. So it probably was a kind of community kitchen for the people living in Chirand. Now next we have at Senuar, you have mentioned the site, mm -hmm. uh, it has two phases of ne Neolithic uh, ages. In the first phase we do not have, I do not know if we have any existence of any pottery, but in the second phase we have three kinds of pottery, the red ware, the burnished grey ware and the burnished red ware. Pita, tell us something about the bead industry over oh, there. Oh yes, it's a fascinating collection of beads in different shapes, different forms, different colors and mostly they're made from jasper, carnelian or marble and uh, uh, it seems that uh, Chiran was actually a bead manufacturing center because you get uh, unfinished bids from here. Okay. That reminds me they were even making microlithic blades uh -huh. out of uh, some of the semi-precious stones yes, like yes, jasper, yes, agate and mm -hmm. uh, quartz and other. 
uh, and along with that we also find some neolithic kilts and axes mm -hmm. and we have hammer stones and uh, of course the agricultural tools like the quern and the pestle as a motor. Mm. So all this consists of the stone tool assemblage mm -hmm. there. Is there any botanical evidence from there? Oh yes, it seems that uh, rice was the main crop along with wheat, uh, barley and there are traces of lentil and millet also. Okay. Uh, do we have any evidence of animal bones? Yes, there are wild animals like the nilgai or the rhinoceros and we have elephant bones from Chirand. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are domesticated animals like cattle, dog and sheep. The states of Orissa and West Bengal, we have some Neolithic sites. And uh, uh, farther to the east, we have some, uh, uh, quite a lot of prehistoric finds from the northern Kachar, Naga hills, that region in, uh, in the borders of Assam and Meghalaya. But uh, actually most of these evidence comes in the form of uh, surface finds. So at many of these spots we do not have a clear stratigraphy. Yet uh, at Orissa for example we have some sites like um, from Mayurbhanj we have uh, uh, Baidipur mm -hmm. and uh, also from Kuar we have got some Neolithic evidence which is in Keonjar. And uh, there is another site in Angul, which is uh, Sankar Ganj. And uh, these sites, at these sites, of course, we have some evidence of Neolithic stone tools. We have, uh, in, at some places, we have evidence of prepared floor for huts, rammed floor for huts, and uh, some amount of pottery, which is actually either grey ware, and there is a variety which is a plain ware with a red slip and some incised decoration. But mostly in other areas, the pottery is black and red ware. Mm -hmm. The dates actually range uh, in around uh, the second millennium BC. Okay. West Bengal actually uh, gives us a very interesting scenario where we find that Neolithic layers are very quickly overlaid with Calcolithic mm -hmm. layers. In fact, at some of the sites we find that Neolithic and Calcolithic overlap has taken place. Uh, one of the primary sites we all know is Pandurajar DP in the Ajay Valley mm -hmm. uh, in from Bardhavan district. Another interesting site is Bharatpur in the mm -hmm. Ajay Valley itself. Mm, uh, at both these sites we have some Neolithic uh, assemblages. We have uh, the black and red ware and a grey ware, a distinctive grey ware. And uh, from Pandurajar TV, we also have evidence of rice. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, and animal bones, cattle is there. Assam Meghala is again a very uh, di difficult situation because uh, uh, mostly uh, good explorations and excavations have not taken place mm -hmm. in these regions. Uh, the two excavated sites that we come, uh, we get from Kachar Hills, one is in Kachar Hills uh, uh, and uh, uh, that is Deojali heading mm. and the other is Sarutaru mm. which is on the border of Meghalaya. Um, but uh, we have some Neolithic assemblages, stone tool assemblages etc. But it is not enough to kind of get a complete graph of the Neolithic from Eastern and India. And these are all surface finds? Not only that, uh, the dates whatever we have got from Assam actually come down to even the historical times. Evidence for prehistory in Eastern India is much later than elsewhere, mm. that is one thing. Bihar is at least uh, slightly earlier, mm. that is ranging from the middle of the third millennium mm. to the middle uh, the end of third millennium. Mm. But when we come farther east in Orissa and uh, in West Bengal, of course it is uh, mostly the second middle of second millennium mm. and the first millennium. In uh, South Indian context, most of the Neolithic sites are found located in the two doabs. Okay. The Raichur doab, which is formed between the Krishna and Tungabhadra, and the Shorapur doab, located between the uh, Krishna and mm. the Bhima rivers. So, these are the two most fertile regions for Neolithic mm. sites. Most of the sites are located in the Andhra Karnataka zone, therefore. The ecological setting is actually very favorable for the Neolithic people. Mm. 
we find that the sites are mostly located at the foothills or the low hill region, mm -hmm. uh, not in the flood plains. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the vegetation here is also very scanty because the rainfall pattern is very, very scanty rainfall. So, as a result of which we do not have much more than shrubs and bushes which actually favored the Neolithic people with their meager stone tools. Mm -hmm. Most of the location is near perennial source of water mm -hmm. on the other hand. K. Padaya who is a very noted archaeologist as we all know, um, he actually excavated uh, a Neolithic site in the Shorapur Doab. Mm -hmm. And his findings actually uh, made him suggest that probably the nuclear zone of Neolithic lies in the regions of the, the high, the Raichur hills, Raichur Doab hills and the Shorapur region. And uh, the early phase of Neolithic actually started out here. It was restricted in this mm -hmm. zone and later on uh, from 1800 BCE, it had shifted towards, it had spread out towards the west and the east and the south. We do not have any evidence, much evidence for Mesolithic in this, in the nuclear zone okay. of the South Indian Neolithic. Mm. Uh, it seems that there is only, it starts with the Neolithic settlements. Mm. So that is what had made Kartikeya Sharma and others also to comment like this, that there was all of a sudden development evolution of the uh, Neolithic in uh, in the context of South India. And about the dating, the period within which the Neolithic had flourished, it is quite early actually for South India. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one of the earliest earliest datings from Watgal, which is a yeah. habitation site. Mm -hmm. It comes around uh, the 2900 mm -hmm. BCE. There are two clear Neolithic phases here. Mm -hmm. The first phase is from third millennium, the second phase is around 1800 BCE. Mm -hmm. And the third phase actually is very interesting where like Eastern India, especially like West Bengal, we have a Neolithic Calculithic overlap phase. Okay. At certain spots, we have come across huge heaps of accumulated ash mounds. Um, these are formed into actually mound like uh, appearance mm -hmm. and uh, these are formed of uh, accumulation of burnt and vitrified cow dung. Analysis was carried out by the noted uh, paleozoologist F. E. Zuner and uh, we are very certain that this is actually cattle dung. Now layers of such dung were probably heaped up one after the other and it has gone into a shape of that sort. But it seems that underneath there was cattle pen because excavations at Utnur carried out by F. R. Alchin, the noted archaeologist revealed that Underneath we have within a particular ground, we have hoof impressions, intact mm. hoof impressions of mm. cattle, just like at Mahagara. Mahagara. But at Mahagara we had a plain thing, I mean mm. it was not uh, overlaid with accumulated mm. ash, no, no. ash mound. Now the stockade area is quite large and in fact according to F. R. Olchin, uh, there is a possibility that from about 1000 to 800 cattle might have been stockaded in the uh, cattle pen at Utnur. Mm -hmm. Another interesting feature is that uh, on the circumference of the ash mound, we have post hole marks. Mm -hmm. Seems that mm -hmm. you know we had a wooden fencing to fencing. it. Such ash mounds have also been found at many other sites like Utnur, I have already talked about. Uh, then we have Kodekal where uh, K. A. Padaya had undertaken certain excavations. Then we have Piklihal and Palaboy from where also we have got similar evidence of ash mounds. So far as habitation sites are concerned, besides ash mound sites, we have a number of habitation sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, such sites have also been found in the Tamil Nadu region, mm -hmm. where we have T. Narsipur and Payampalli. Payampalli. Yeah. And good, good botanical evidence is available mm -hmm. from these sites, where it seems that they were using uh, ragi, millet, and uh, horse gram, chickpea, mm. the kind of yeah, other crops, crops from yeah from the northern Neolithic yeah. zone. We get newer crops actually. Mm. Yeah. Can you tell us something about the rock art that we find in the southern Neolithic sites? Yes, that is another very interesting feature. Uh, you see, from uh, the twin site of uh, Sanganakallu, Tekkal Kota, or Kupkal yeah. Sanganakallu, there are nearby rock shelters where uh, we have seen some kind of 
bruisings on rock you know etchings or bruisings mm -hmm. they are not painting as such but mm -hmm. like that you know in archaeologists term we call it petroglyphs mm -hmm. and uh, the the motifs are basically some kind of animal motifs is the mm -hmm. most common one cattle being the most common one and other animals are like tiger deer and uh, buffalo besides which we have certain symbolic anthropo figures also anthropomorphic or anthropomorphic figures also mm -hmm. so they, they all of these if you put them together uh, actually gives us a very rich picture of the south indian neolithic mm -hmm. and the date as we know ranges between the third and the second millennium second bc millennium. Another thing about the Neolithic at uh, South Indian uh, context, we find that there is an overlap phase, the next mm. phase. This is what we call a phase 3. Phase okay. 3. Yeah. In between the Neolithic assemblage in general, we have uh, the sudden occurrence of some metal objects, mm. Mm. copper and bronze mm -hmm. and even gold mm -hmm. in mm. some place. In India, each region had its own typical characteristics. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, the, and of course, in every zone, there are certain areas in which clusters of Neolithic sites mm -hmm. actually emerged. Mm -hmm. Maybe the geographical and climatic mm -hmm. reasons had compelled the early mm -hmm. man to settle in certain areas. Also, the fact that they were using the raw material that oh, was yeah, available in their own regions. Local regions. So, that had a great influence, a great impact mm -hmm. on how they were going to interact with the nature mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. So, that is also another thing, the climate, different climates. For example, you, the Kashmir people, uh, the earliest Neolithic batch of people preferred to live in subterranean mm -hmm. pits mm -hmm. because probably that gave them some insulation yeah, from yeah. the cold climate. More mm -hmm. comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically, in other places, you will find that so far as dwelling style is concerned, mm -hmm. there is almost a common yeah. feature of wattle yeah. and daub houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the pottery, you, when you come to pottery, you have these regional yeah, features, features which is very Some of them are, uh, quite characteristic in each region. Although I think the black and red were was gradually emerging as, as one of the common wares in one. most uh, areas. Even the grey wear, right? Even think. the grey wear, mm -hmm. yes. So. But but stylistic differences were there yes, and the manufacturing differences were there. Mm -hmm. Cattle mm -hmm. emerges as the most common animal. About their belief system, we yes. also find yeah. peculiar type of burial systems, mm. for example, at uh, Burzahum, um, which is very specific. Mm. Uh, but in at many other places, we find almost common features with mm. their own typicalities. Mm. So, it is a very colorful matrix That's of so culture fun. that we get. That's true. And uh, the Neolithic culture is uh, spread over the entire subcontinent.